Most people in life expect to get quality restaurant food regardless of where they buy it. On a somewhat regular basis, I stop in at a semi-defunct Steak and Shake that is on Prospect in Champaign, Illinois. I've had some extra loving kindness from a young man who is the grill chef or the grill cook, and he often provides me something that's sort of nice, just some friendly talk and a little help. The other day he bought my meal and gave me a bunch of napkins. The next day I couldn't find any of the napkins at all. Yesterday he was kind and offered me a vanilla shake. It was outstanding, I have to say, and it was worth every penny that I paid, which I did try to pay him, but he wouldn't take the money. He said, no worries, I'll pay for it for you. And that was the kindness that I thought a young man was trying to build a relationship with an old man who's in struggle, who's living in homelessness, and who is literally still working on getting his career back on track. The problem is I wake up this morning and find that the pocket change that we were sort of going back and forth over of him taking into the actual till for part of my meal and part of that shake that I was trying to pay for is now gone. All the change is out of my pockets and my sunglasses that were in my left pocket are also missing. Those sunglasses cost me $7 down at the Ross store. I like them for how they looked on me and I like them for the fact that they still allowed me to see somewhat clearly. You see, not all sunglasses allow you to see well when you're in them and it's true. When you put sunglasses on, it adjusts what you can see. In life, we have moments of time to speak the truth, and for some reason, my sunglasses and the pocket chains is completely missing from my pockets. Now, why is that? Did I possibly have it fall out of pockets that aren't really mine because of how I was sleeping, or did someone walk through, see things falling out, and decide to pick them up and take them? You see, we have people who pilfer in the night. We have people who prowl around at night, and when I was walking away from the place that I was staying in the night, I made note of a man walking away about the same time. I see this sort of thing on a too much of a regular basis, where people try and go and lay and stay near people, and then they try to disappear after they've done something illegal and immoral. The Steak and Shake, well, I was told last year, was in the process of closing because of Steak and Shake basically going bankrupt. That's what a female worker told me and why she couldn't help with my program. But ever since I started working on my program, some person has been illegally and immorally putting their hands in my pockets, taking the business cards that I was tracking of who I was interacting with and networking with, and literally interfering with those relationships up until the last few weeks ago when I lost again cards from the Longhorn people. I didn't drop them out of my pockets because my pockets had zippers. And what I find offensive is that my pants that I just purchased down at the Ross store that had zipper pockets and were a slicker type material for Wickaway are no longer mine. I seem to be in a pants that doesn't fit me quite right and they're not the ones that I bought in that store because the pockets don't have zippers anymore. People who try to steal from people often do that. They often take the pants off someone when they're not even thinking or when they're totally asleep and they literally play with them like a doll. We have incredibly immoral people in this world. We have Christians that will walk up to a homeless person and say, here's some money, take the money, don't you want it? And you just sit there and look at them and go, no, I don't want your ill-gotten, ill-given money. It's not a donation to me if you're expecting to take something back from me because of something you decided to do on your job in front of your company people, in front of your manager perhaps, and now you're in trouble for it. He literally told me that they don't count the change in the drawer. I sort of marveled at that because I thought, why wouldn't they count the change that comes in from customers paying for food? But maybe the pastor or maybe the preacher or maybe the gosh, the manager there doesn't want to do it, or maybe the store is not really supposed to be open at all, but someone decided to keep it open and build a business with some friends. It was sort of marvelment to me that this heavy set gentleman was being talked to by another manager and someone else in a way that made them look sort of like a family of choice, where they had come together sort of as a family of choice. And I almost didn't go to the restaurant yesterday because the windows were open and that child that I sort of regarded named Austin 
was shouting at the top of his lungs in a ridiculous football player sort of way. Now, maybe he was just carrying on, maybe they're just goofing off, and that does happen in a store. And they weren't busy at all, so it's not like too many people would hear them, but what I felt like was that all that professionalism that I had felt and experienced from him and that good customer service and the extra kindness was just a game. And it wasn't at all what I thought it was going to be. I did go in because of the encouragement of the Lord saying, no, we want you to buy here. And I did buy my standard number 10. But what I was told was that the cheese that went on the number 10 cost an extra dollar, which is why it wasn't a four for four or a meal under four dollars as it was advertised, that it became a five and a half dollar meal. What Austin said to me was, you can just give me six dollars and it'll be fine. And I thought, no, I'm not going to overpay for something I buy all the time. But I didn't say that to the young man. Again, he's in his 20s, and he's trying to be cool, and he's trying to be calm, and maybe he's trying to make up for the stupid shit he had played on me the day before. But what I don't like finding when I wake up in the morning is things gone from my pockets, lighters missing, and other things that belong to me gone from my property. I know I put those sunglasses from my bin into my left pocket when I went to sleep, and it is a sin to steal from anyone else's house even if they're not making one peep and they're stuck in REM sleep. You are an immoral person if you've stolen from me. You are an illegal person if you thought you are going to teach me some lesson of living in the streets, and you are literally heading to federal prison because it is illegal to cross a state line to harass someone all the time, and the people that were stealing from me also stole my beverage food from me. Every time I would go to sleep in my vehicle in Indiana when I was traveling or in Ohio or wherever the heck I was driving, someone was always taking my powdered packets from me, my powdered beverage packets from me. I'd buy them and they'd go missing. This past week, I found some that had been brought back to me and somebody had actually taped it shut like that was a way to handle it. And I was just beyond offended that we have people in our society who think they're clever, who think they're bright, who think they own me in some way, but they don't own me. Do they own you? Do people in your life own you? Because a person in your life says, you can't do that. I'm not going to allow you to do that. You can't be that. You're not going to become that. I'm going to interfere with that. And that is a person of Satan. Jesus Christ puts in our souls what we're supposed to become and who we are. And anybody who wants to piss all over your body, literally sexually assaulting you in the night while you're sleeping, or play something to make you keep yourself totally in slumber, or give you something to eat or drink that makes you unable to wake, is an immoral person. We have that problem in sexual trafficking today, and someone has most definitely harmed my body without my consent. And I promise you, I am coming for those officers who did not do their job right, who failed me in every turn and openly, I'm going to make sure the military puts them on the floor. They will learn their lesson because they are the lowest on the totem pole in our military. They report to the president and the current president has a different policy than the past president who for some reason is still getting some news capability today. Why the motherfuck is that? His job is over with. He was essentially fired. Not maybe by the majority, but that was the stupid marketing of a 30-year-old girl running social media, perhaps. Or maybe Americans don't really give a shit about politics as they should. I've seen the numbers since the election's over with dwindle all the time. But if you think that a homeless man can't teach someone high up a position in a position how to do something, you're out of your mind. Someone is literally benefiting from my paperwork. I see the food pantry trucks Eastern Illinois food pantry trucks all over the city collecting from places they never thought of before. But I had a marvelous conversation from, with one of those people. They gave me a $50 gift card to Meyer, but somebody actually stole that in my journal from me. The thieves in America are thieves. The immoral white men are immoral. The satanic Spanish people are satanic. The ill-gotten, immoral, illegal his, uh, people who are of a different predilection alternative lifestyles can be just as bad in their ideas about life. But who the fuck took me out of my pants and took away my zippered pockets is pissing me off. I have a right to sleep and not be played with like a doll. And when I find out who did that, I'm going to pound them into the fucking ground with every law that I can find. Because underneath the human rights law, 
the United Nations World Treaties. We are a leader of that fucking thing, and we have Americans that don't regard it, don't care about it, and just think that their opinion is more important than the law.